Oh, it's Alec F1. Um, doing a review for my trumpeter. Um, 132nd scale Avenger. Um, would be this kit right here. TBM3 Avenger. Right there. I am building this for um, a church here locally. It's named after the pilot. His name was William Hooten. They call him Billy Hooten. Now he went down on the Hornet in early 45, um, doing runs on the up for Iwo Jima, hitting Jap convoys. Um, they were actually on a torpedo run on a convoy when he was kind of reported missing. Um, I'm down to look like some naked sprues over there. So. My work table is actually a kitchen table, so I know it's foul, but I've, well, I say I protected it pretty well. I'm pretty neat about my stuff. Um, I don't spill a lot of paint. Um, I work out of a tackle box, and I work out of a box of junk that I put up every night. Kind of a pain, but that's what I do. But um, the Avenger kit's not bad at all. Um, hundred dollar kit expensive um, but uh, it went together pretty decently I was really surprised at how well the halves went together I've been testing some trying to get seam lines out still have a little bit of cleanup on things to do um, I got the ball turret together which really wasn't as bad as everyone said it was but uh, the thing that took me the most time yeah, uh, the wood grain in that led me to believe. I have not seen any pictures where the radio deck was on wood, but that's what I've chosen to do here because there was wood grain in it, and I kind of thought, well, yeah, why wouldn't they put it on, mount it on wood? Anyway, I bought a aftermarket photo etch set that was pretty detailed, and that's taken me a lot of time to work up. Most of my days have been spent on the photo etch on the control panel I'm a big um, stickler for cockpits and um, anyway I have been spending tons of time on this the paint scheme the inside the ball turret wasn't as bad as I thought it would be I've got a lot of touch up to do in this um, see if I can the interior here, a lot of radios, things such as that. But um, um, it's been uh, the toughest thing I had to do was this cowl right here. Um, inside, there's um, engine mounts, for the firewalls. Uh, got the bay. You can't see it up in there now. I sealed it up. I decided not to go. Maybe you see the supports in there. Yeah, right there. Okay, those are supports. I they end up being a little too long, kind of wonky. Um, if you're going to display, if you're going to cut these these panels out here because you want to see the firewall, you want to see the oil reservoir and that sort of thing, you're going to want to stick that, spend a little extra time sticking that together, and that's going to be a bit of a pain um, because I found here's the engine. Engine's really nice. Really like the engine. Um, had a lot of detail to it. I added the wires to it, but um, it just was not fitting correctly. So I decided to chop the supports inside so I could bring this part of the uh, engine firewall up on here, make it mate and be nice and everything. Nice seam lines and all, because I didn't care about that. Here's my torpedo. Um, dirty little torpedo that it is. Um, it's top is not as right here is what I was going for sort of kind of a you know, brassy metal there on the back the warhead every warhead I've seen on every photo I could find was just scuffed up garbage yeah that's right and um, I'm kind of in the I'm doing some experimentation with um, shading on the flaps on the green things like that um, trying to get some different colors to play in there. 
Um, but this is, it's coming together. I'm, uh, the fuselage is together and that's probably the biggest pain that I had. That cockpit was hairy in there. I mean, it really was. Um, it went together good, but I'm, I'm also using photo etch from a TBM1 uh, kit and I have to kind of pick and choose. Would you get out of here? Cat, sorry. Um, anyway, it's all coming together pretty good, but um, most of my stuff is, I'm almost there. Um, we've almost delivered. All I've got less left to do is the uh, is the wings. I'm putting those together slowly. I've pre-painted these, doing some experimentation with them, with the colors, like I said. But um, uh, mostly, uh, I mean, the biggest part is done. Um, I love the control surfaces on here. Those are pretty nice. I just have a lot of little stuff to do. Um, I'm putting all the big equipment together, and it's just starting to come together. And... Um, Looking pretty good. But yeah, it's a pretty decent kit. That and the wings, what I'm at to now, these mechanisms here that are supposed to make it foldable, they're pretty wonky to me. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work in reality. Where the photo etch went, the instructions weren't too clear on the photo etch right along in these places right here. Bottoms of the wings. This brass photo etch. The placement was, you could see where, it looked like there were notches down in here where it ran along. I thought about putting it, putting it where it was um, flush with that plastic, but then I, I looked at it and it really didn't look, it looked like it was gonna overlap panels and other stuff and there was sort of a bit of a line that went through there anyway. So I decided let it hang over when dry fitting it together it kind of looked a little strange kind of weird um we'll see how she does um but anyway eh, it's a pretty decent kit um i've still got a ways to go i mean most of it's the fun stuff where you put the large pieces together do the overall paint scheme i'm trying to get a early hornet paint scheme for it um and uh hooten's he was, they said he was one of the best, he was with VT-17, one of the best torpedo pilots that they had, best flyers they had. Um, story was that he had a flight suit he never would change out of. I've got a picture on my phone here I can't show, but um, he never washed his flight suit. It was his lucky flight suit. And they said, although my brother had researched it, because he works for the 45th Infantry Museum, and he contacted some guys that were in the squadron, um, like, couple or one i think is still alive last he talked um but uh years ago he talked to some squadron mates they said man he would just his his flight suit stunk so bad they told him you need to get rid of it you know you're killing us in the briefing room stink to high heaven so the guy guys decided they took his flight suit and they threw it off the fantail got him a new flight suit and they said man he was sick he was just you know they jinxed him um sick to death well next mission they were hitting the jap convoy to iwo jima and that's the one he didn't come back from they said everybody in the squadron was just you know devastated and they felt like they killed him um whether real or imagined you know they they thought they killed their best pilot friend um but, you know, I mean, who wouldn't think that? Um, but anyway, interesting guy. They named a church after him here. His his father was, uh, I believe, a bishop in the Methodist church back in the 40s here in Oklahoma City. He was a high-ranking high Methodist minister or bishop, something. So they named uh, the church my mom went to since she was like 13 years old after him. Um, my mom's been, my mom's now 83, I think. She still goes to the same church. Um, just a little back history on what I'm trying to do. Um, they were the Four Square Squadron. You've probably seen it. Um, pictures of the Hornet. It's going to be in all blue, just like this one. It's not going to be in George Bush colors, um, but it's going to resemble. It looks a lot like that right there, but 
It's got um, well the four squares, four white or two white squares here and down here, I believe. So and on the wings, on the wing tips. So anyway, I just thought if I don't do my review now, it's never gonna get done. You know, I'm better just whack it out before you know too far down the road. But anyway, it's an interesting, um, interesting model. Um, the photo wedge, like I said, was, was, man, it was a dog to go through. I'm still, the only thing I've got left is, um, this hatch back here, the entry hatch down where the radio operator is, um, which is somewhere over, the ball turret was not as bad as I thought it would be. Honestly, the cockpit and the, oh, the cockpit was, was kind of a bear. Oh, where's our, there it is right there. That's really kind of the reason I bought this kit. Because I thought that the uh, thought the hatch there with all the little photo etch was pretty darn cool with the all of your all your little plates and your handles entry stuff really cool but man you talk about yeah you know, I didn't think that the ball turret to me wasn't as bad as getting this first part just killed me. There's just so much photo etch in here. I mean, I'm not an expert by far, but all this. And I integrated parts of the cockpit in with this. The boxes, soldering it together. Um, man, I've just been gone through a whole bottle of MRP interior green right there with this sucker. And we're probably going to be going through quite a bit of that sea blue as well. So, but anyway, um, that's my review right now. Just getting the odds and ends together, slapping it up, and be on the road. Um, anyway, see you guys later. Bye.